Hey, it's Dr. Nadia, and I wanted to pop in today and talk about a conversation that's been up quite a bit this week around uh, the power of community, um, the desire to connect, and how that affects us as uh, women business owners or even women leaders um, who may still be in corporate. Uh, one of the, the misconceptions I feel a lot of times, especially for those who are building a business or desire to maybe leave their corporate jobs, is that you take one leap. <laughs> you only leap that one time and you're done. Um, the truth is that you take and you make a lot of leaps. And the biggest battle that I feel that we as women face is the battle in our minds, the battle with fear, the battle with doubt, um, the battle that with our emotions, whatever those emotions may be. And sometimes that can be a true hurdle from moving forward. And so this week, um, I've just been in conversations, but also, I, quite honestly, just experiencing some of that myself. And, you know, making some transitions in my own business and what that looks like, you know, taking those leaps. Um, and one thing that I've uh, decided to share today and I wanted to, um, to talk about is a conversation that I had with a colleague. Uh, she and I were talking about some project stuff and she and I actually used to work together and supported um, a big guru in the industry. And um, that's how we first met, because we were both uh, in different roles, but we provided support for this person. And we were just talking about, you know, life after, right? <laughs> life after that experience and what it was like. And we, she and I had never really talked about how we both made the decisions to move on and do other things. Um, it, wasn't, it wasn't that type of thing. And so we, as we were talking about this particular project, it came up and we just talked about you know, what that transition was like and some of our thoughts before making that transition. And one of the things that she said, and it just struck me was she was like, you know what, Dr. Nadia, I realized that the rope wasn't even real. She's like, you know, I asked, you know, I, and she had that exclamation even within herself as she went through her own process around this rope not being real that she felt was holding her back. Um, and, you know, I, I could relate because I felt the same way. And so if you're not familiar with where the analogy comes from, a lot of times, um, and where I learned it was when trainers train elephants, which you know are very large animals, um, they, when they're, the elephants are babies, they use a chain. And when the babies are, the elephants are, the baby elephants are, you know, they try to get away, they, they pull up against this chain and so they, they don't leave. And so once this elephant is now mature, it's an adult elephant, you will often see that they are bound by a rope, which they are totally stronger than, and they could really move on. They could break away from that rope and just take off and go back. But they, they've tried it already, right? So they've been conditioned. And in many ways, a lot of times we're dealing with our own conditioning um, that we're bumping up against, whether it's cultural, um, just you know what we've lived through. And so um, when I decided to make this leap for myself, from that particular role, it, it was a process. And so I could totally relate to what she was saying and this complete analogy and that realization that it wasn't real um, because I too had that feeling. And one of the things that really struck me and why it was so relevant even to a lot of the conversations this week around community and the feelings of, and cravings or desires for connection was it one of the things that worried me the most and was most surprising? Like, you know, I wasn't surprised that I was looking at the numbers, right? You know, like, okay, how will this impact me financially? Um, what my ramp up time, like all of those tangibles, that wasn't a huge surprise. I, I feel that there's, there's wisdom in that. Um, but one of the things that really struck me was that feeling of, I'm going to be alone. Like, if I, if I make this leap, I am now leaping from community and family and being a part of this team and a part of this world to now going back to being alone. And that feeling was honestly quite surprising. Like I wasn't expecting that particular feeling to pop up for me and it caused me pause. It did cause me not to move forward, but it definitely caused me pause. And it took me a while to really embrace that. 
And even after I made the decision that this is what I was going to do, I was going to leave and going through that whole process of preparing someone else to take over all the things that I was doing and that whole turnover. The one thing that would have made me go back and not move forward was that feeling of loneliness or that impending feeling of loneliness or what that might look like um, to do this now, quote unquote, by myself which I have community in place. I have people in place. And so that was really one of the things. So I get it. And I wanted to share with you, one, to just pay attention to what are the, the ropes, if you will, in your life that are holding you back that may or may not be real. And how do you do, how will you pay attention to those or address those things now that you're aware of what's really going on? Because now we're looking at the underlying cause and not just the effect. Um, and also I had a couple tips to the, um, around this that I wanted to share. Number one is change and transition are always uncomfortable. Um, it, it just is. There's some discomfort in those pieces. Sometimes it's big uncomfortable. Uh, sometimes it's a little uncomfortable, but there is that those levels of discomfort because things are different. There's nothing wrong with it. And I also get that you sometimes don't want to go through that. Just embrace it. Embrace it. Um, because I think the more we fight against it, the, it kind of prolongs the entire process. I also feel like when you know what's coming, um, in some cases, it helps to prepare you and you're not all freaked out when it happens. So it's part of the process. And especially when you're making huge transitions like leaving your job or and starting a business or, you know, transitioning your business model, the types of clients you work with, like those things are huge and they can be really unnerving. Um, I know uh, quite, a, quite a few friends or colleagues that once supported, you know, someone else in their business in different types of ways, and now you're maybe cutting that off, so that's a revenue stream. But again, it's also a part um, of your, your world, your community, your, your peeps. And so in some ways, there's that grieving process that you also go through. Um, and sometimes in, we also have our identity tied up in that. So that's a whole nother video. But to, again, to just think about and, and be okay with that. Number two is being alone isn't a bad thing. Having that time to really think about it. I'm in this space right now, um, even in my own world, of just having a little more spaciousness. I'm not running around putting out fires. I'm not dealing this, you know, with certain things. And I find that I'm fighting against that. And I even sometimes create um, issues, if you will, because I feel like I need to have something to conquer or something, a fire to put out. So I'm paying attention to what, what is that all about and embracing the alone or the downtime, the time of just not being in constant motion, because that's also when I get a lot of creative ideas, I get a lot of additional clarity. Um, the quiet is where you get to really hear your inner voice because now you're not, it's not battling with all the other voices telling us what we should do and how we should be and all of those kinds of things. So being alone isn't necessarily a bad thing and being willing to embrace it and take in that quiet and, um, and, and hear, you know, from yourself, spending some time with yourself and really being clear on what do you want? What do you want in your business? What do you want for your family? What do you want for your life? What do you want? Because a lot of times we're doing what we think our coach wants us to do, our family wants us to do, and we have all these expectations. And if you're the gold star A plus kind of girl like myself, then that's, that's just kind of how we roll. And so that's what we do. So really just taking some time to pay attention to that because it's not a bad thing to have the alone time, to have the time to take walks in the park or take a nap or go get a massage and not be in constant go, go, go mode because we do need that time to recharge and refocus so that we can go out there and conquer the world, if you will. And then number three is don't be afraid to reach out for feedback and or support. Um, reaching out and saying you need help is a sign of strength, is not a sign of weakness, and we all need it. We need that, that trusted friend or advisor or mentor to just, you know, to bounce ideas off of, to kind of share that, you know, I'm not really clear, I don't really know what's going on, um, or I feel some kind of way about, you know, I think this is maybe the direction I want to go in, but I, these things are coming up, and to have a trusted person where you can share that and get feedback and also support and encouragement because taking these leaps and making these changes in our lives aren't always easy. 
And I don't care what social media and other people may say, we make it look fun and glamorous. And there are, there are those fun elements, but there's also this process that we have to go through to get there. And sometimes it doesn't look that neat <laughs> and it doesn't feel that good, but you can get through it. But I think the biggest thing is that many times what's holding us back really isn't as big as we thought it was. And sometimes it's not even real, no matter how real it may feel. So doing that reality check, that gut check around what's really holding me back and is the rope even real? So with that, um, I would love your comments, your feedback. You know, what are some of the things that you're dealing with right now? Changes that you're making, leaps that you're, you're making in your life in it, or in your business or in your career, your family. Um, would love to get that feedback. So feel free to, to reach out um, and connect with me and give me that feedback. And I would also love to invite you to my upcoming Take the Leap event in October, October 12th through the 14th here in sunny Phoenix, Arizona, where, where we're going to talk about those changes with taking the leap and starting your business or building your business or changing your business model. Like, what does all of that really mean? And you'll be in community. So we'll talk about and take a look at how to overcome the, the feelings of loneliness and you'll make those connections because now you'll have other people that get it. I call it my team of crazy. Those people who are crazy enough to support me and believe in me and my big dreams and to be there to cheer me on as I'm moving forward to achieving my big vision. And so again, those dates are October 12th through the 14th here in Phoenix, Arizona. If you would like to get more information, head on over to take TheLeapEvent.com. That's TakeTheLeapEvent.com. I look forward to seeing you there. This is Dr. Nadia, your champion for womanpreneurs, signing off. I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.